All right, everybody, welcome to Raz Music. Before we begin, I remind you, please hit that subscribe button so we can do more interviews like this. I'm so happy that our metal community continues to grow. So thank you for that. Le recuerdo, suscríbanse al canal para hacer más entrevistas como estas. Nuestra comunidad de metal sigue creciendo por todo el mundo. Muchas, muchas gracias. Let's go ahead and begin. Vamos a comenzar. Our guest today, he's a multi-instrumentalist from Sweden. You probably already know who he is. You know him from his prolific work, many, many bands that he's worked with, such as King Diamond, Merciful Fate, Memento Mori, Notre Dame, Dream Evil, Loud and Nasty, Therion, Demon Borger, Triple X, and of course, his solo career, and many, many, many more. And of course, his <laughs> solo career, his latest is the book of heavy metal. And now live, dark from a mysterious place in Sweden, it's Mr. Snowy Shaw. How you doing, Mr. Snowy? Welcome. I'm doing excellent. Thanks for thanks for having me. It's a, such a pleasure so far. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so far, Snowy. Uh, we're we're going through very difficult times, which we're going to talk about later. But you know, talk to us straight out of the gates. Tell us about your latest book, The Book of Heavy Metal. It's 30 years of metal comprised into 400, 489 ounces of greatness. Yeah. Talk to us about that. The thing is that I, I had. When I started this out, it started out as a, some sort of homemade kind of um, therapy, just to, to get to, to terms with my own inner demons and my bullshit after I turned 40. Then I kind of, I have this kind of pity pan syndrome a little bit. So, you know, <laughs> it being in, in this business, you know, uh, uh, from the beginning, it was like a youth culture thing, you know, but now you see the Rolling Stones guys, they're like 90 or something like that. So, so yeah, but you can't actually, age in this youth uh, yeah, culture or whatever it is. But I had a bit of a problem there. So, so I came to a crossroad when I have to, uh, you know, get a little bit of things sorted out. And uh, instead of jumping from the bridge, which I was kind of planning on doing or spending all my hard earned money on uh, psychiatry or, or uh, you know, whatever the, the therapy for years and years, I decided I have this uh, premonition, whatever you call it, like a, like a, uh, yeah. So I decided to go home yeah. and just write, write down all my thoughts just to be able to, to um, take a step back and, and look at it objectively. And uh, that way I just kept doing that. And, and it turned out, it turns out that, wow, this is actually the, a good solution. And I, after that, once I sort of got over the, over the, the hill or something you know, of my depression there, I figured that I should keep a journal and um, and keep doing that every once in a while, whatever it's going on, I'm being out on tour and so on. So it's like a tour reports and this and that. So, yeah, but this is, um, it's not just about my music life, but I, I fucking uh, pledged my life to, to uh, follow my dream and to live my dream or, or uh, you know, be able to, to, to accomplish what I what I set out to do instead of following the following the path of my parents and working in the industry at Volvo or whatever you know in the harbor. Right. You spoke. Uh, you said something uh, that really stood out to me. You said that uh, writing your thoughts and and writing your experiences did it. It was therapeutic for you. Did it Did it help? Did reliving those experiences and writing them down in a journal help you get through that hill, Snowy? Did Absolutely. seeing all that you accomplished. Yeah, but that's what I needed to do. I mean, I guess we all, at some part in our lives, need to go through some therapy and, and get to terms with ourselves. We have a lot of, you know, things that might seem like distant dreams or something that you just imagine back in the day in your childhood or whatever. Right. Those are kind of uh, uh, problems or, or or whatever you could say that you need to deal with at some point in life in order to go, you know, go further in life you need to to solve that old problems I, I suppose you know so that's what I did and to be able to take a step back and see it black on white okay here here that's that's how it is and that's why I've been brutally honest otherwise it wouldn't help if I would sit there and lie to myself and avoid certain uncomfortable thoughts or whatever you know like of or whatever it might be you know so I, I, that, I really hey, I really admire oh. I really admire this, Snowy. Sorry for interrupting you, but I think you're just just starting this interview. Uh, I think you've said something very important that's very current with the times. You know, uh, maybe a lot of musicians who are listening to you, uh, maybe they're experiencing uh, similar a uh, similar situation, similar feelings. You know, just so just saying like, hey, look back to what all you accomplished is really yeah. important to know where you stand today. It's fantastic. What the the, the message you're delivering is fantastic. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, but I mean, I tend to do that sort of um, uh, uh, spontaneously, like every 10 years or something. I, I had like big problems even turning 20 because I was like a uh, yeah a whiz kid for the, with the drums. And people say, right. wow, you have a bright future ahead. Are you going to be something, you know, and stuff. But I was like spending a lot of time, you know, like uh, with my slacker friends and nothing happened. I tried to, to to create my own bands and all that and nothing happened. And when I was like 19, I, I got a little bit of inner stress and what the fuck? Soon I'm not a teenager anymore. Something's got to happen now and fucking soon. And so 20, 30, 40 and I turned 50 now, like the other year. And, uh, you know, so, so, but every 10 years you have to sit down a little bit and, and, and stop in, instead of just rushing forward all the time and think of okay now i've done i've, I've been sort of running down this path has mm -hmm. that led me any further or closer to my goal or should i sort of um modify my my uh, my the path from now on or whatever i want to accomplish or do in life am i happy now no <laughs> so, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that would be receiving such insightful psychological help from Mr. Snowy Shaw? I'm telling you, this metal talk brings you all types of observations and great insight on your favorite musicians. Thank you for that observation, Snowy. And uh, this is going to be a, a fantastic segue. You mentioned that whiz kid, that prodigy in the drums. You're so young, you were adopted. And part of my question is this. Obviously, um, well, you started charting your territory in metal with a huge name like King Diamond. You uh, you put down that flag uh, and you said, I'm here. I'm that whisk kid of the drums. How was it to be adopted into such a big name so early on? Because that that is that is the dream. How did you how did you go into that fold so early on? Um, I don't know. I actually turned it down the first time. It was Mickey ah. D. We were hanging out on Christmas Day. Uh, I was back home in Gothenburg, and uh, he was also back home from from Los Angeles. And he then he told me when we were out partying, and he said because I've known that guy since I was 13 years old, and he's been mm -hmm. kind of a role model in a lot of ways, and also a mentor because he's five years older than me. And and by the time I I got to know him when I was 13, he had already played for 13 years. So I looked up to him and stuff. Even though I grew way taller, so I looked down on him. I still look up on him. <laughs> 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 and you're huge, man. You're tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like five feet or something. yeah doesn't matter. But anyway, um, so he told me that, okay, I'm going to quit King Diamond. Um, and he re revealed that to me and he said, I think you should be the perfect guy to take my to take the drum stool or the, the, the spot after me. And I thought it was just the, the drink doing the talking, basically. And I always wanted to create my own music. So I said, no, oh, fuck that. You know, <laughs> I like it. You know, I'm a big fan of King Diamond and Merciful Fate. I, I was a huge fan when I was a kid and stuff. But I always wanted to, to do my own stuff, you know. But anyway, so, uh, you know, a couple of months later, Pete Black, the guitar player, got in touch with me. He, he had sort of kept an eye on me for, for a long time. He wanted to have me in his own fold. He, he, when he was playing before King Diamond, he was in a band called Geisha. It's like a Danish sort of glam and whatever. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to take that spot, to, and but I, you know, it was in my cup of tea, so to say, uh, to, so to speak. But um, anyway, so at the second time, you know, when when he offered me the spot, because he he would call me up and say, "Hey, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm coming back to Gothenburg. Like, can we meet up the next day or something? Because I have something I want to talk to you about." They've been auditioned over 40 drummers, like from, you know, wow. really well-established guy from all over the world. Big names and all that. But to take the, 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 the slot after Mickey D. And that seemed to be kind of hard, I suppose. Of course, but anyway, yeah. so, uh, I grew up with that. And, and you, know, you know, so so once that thing was presented to me a second time, I figured out, okay, this is meant to happen. I cannot fucking turn this down. This is going to change my life around and, and all that. And it certainly did. It was like a, a, let's say an overnight sensation or something. I flew to Los Angeles and you know we're hanging out. Like it was a dream come true. I mean, it was really crazy. I mean, from one day to another, I was like recording this sleepless nights video, hanging out with uh, wow. these big blonde bimbos and, and you know. <laughs> and like, this? You, know yeah, yeah. you had the so, dream starter to a career. A dream started to a career, Snowy. For for you know the conspiracy tour, it was we started out like for three, three, three and a half months in America alone, headlining with that that kind of 
horror show. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge right. Alice Cooper fan, for for instance, and this is uh, this is uh, yeah, sort of the same uh, same same thing, I guess you know. So let's talk about that that horror element that you mentioned, uh, because truthfully, uh, and uh, I don't want to fast forward into your career, but uh, I, I discovered you a bit later in your career, and one of the most appealing things to me was your style. Uh, I know that you brought it on stage with Therion, and I know that you brought a lot of, um, how can I say this, um, uh, production, if you will, production value to the fold. Uh, my question is, uh, did King Diamond uh, really inspire that out of you, the the clothing, the all the, all the extra elements that you bring into a band when you join the fold? Um, I got to say that uh, to me, for me to end up with, with, with King Diamond, I mean, it was the perfect thing, of course, because he, right. but, but we have the same, I mean, he, despite he being 12 years older than me, I mean, we have the same, exact same influences, which is mm. Alice Cooper, Casey Ray Heap, and, <laughs> and, and right. uh, Brown and all that. So, so, uh, yeah, we, we kind of have the same influences and stuff. And for me, I, Kiss was, was such a turning point in my life when I discovered that because I was like a nutcase for horror comics and horror films and, and superhero comics, Batman and all that. And then you had, I was listening sort of casually to, to bands like Nazareth and uh, The Purple and all that, Sweet, mm -hmm. and I really liked that. But Kiss, wow, wow, they looked the part. It was like superheroes, like the werewolf on drums and Batman right. and <laughs> like that. So yeah. it was like a combination, especially with the Kiss Destroyer, because it's so cinematic and the production of Bob Estrin is so, has so much imagination. It's like, it's like listening to, to a, let's say, a dark action movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I keep saying that in every fucking interview I do, but that's sort of so been the benchmark. And I still, to this day, have that as a sort of, um, yeah, the formula that I want to accomplish myself, like the, the best combination of what you see and what you hear, because I've always been like that. I, I told the Therian guys when they hired me as a singer, mm -hmm. and uh, on the side of that, they also wanted me to, to uh, design the, the stage props and... Uh...